the doctrine of separate but equal, upon which the entire institution of segregation was based, had been ruled unconstitutional. I was so excited. Surely everything was going to change. I thought that, come fall, I'd be riding a state-of-the-art bus to a state-of-the-art school. An integrated school. Not everybody was so excited. Don't get in trouble. Don't you get in the way. But my parents' attitude didn't bother me nearly as much as those among the ministers at the church, who never mentioned these injustices in their sermons. It did not escape my notice that our minister always departed church in a very nice automobile. Then, one Sunday morning, in early 1955, I was listening to WRMA out of Montgomery when I heard a sermon by someone unknown to me, a young preacher from Atlanta. I didn't catch his name until the very end. And so thank you, and again, you just heard Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Coming up next, you've got a real treat for you on this Sunday. Dr. King's message hit me like a bolt of lightning. He applied the principles of the church to what was happening now, today. It was called the social gospel, and it felt like he was preaching directly to me. I went to the school library on Monday to find out everything I could about this man. At the time, I could only find one newspaper article, but 1955 was a watershed year. In May, a second Supreme Court ruling in Brown v. Board prompted segregationist elected officials like Senators James Eastland of Mississippi and Strom Thurmond of South Carolina to swear to the death their continued defiance of the court. Lines had been drawn. Blood was beginning to spill. That August, an incident occurred which no one could ignore. In Money, Mississippi, the body of 14-year-old Emmett Till, who was down from Chicago visiting relatives, was pulled from the bottom of the Tallahatchie River. The day before, as he left the Money Country store with some friends, Emmett said, bye baby, to the white woman behind the counter. The next day, he was dead. A black farmer named Moses Wright witnessed the two white men dragging Emmett Till from his relative's home and had the courage to testify against them in open court. The all-white jury found these two white defendants not guilty. A few months later, they even confessed to the murder in Look magazine, but there was nothing to be done. They had already been tried. Then... On December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks refused to move to the back of the bus. If you don't move, I'll be forced to call the police and they will arrest you. You may do just that. My family didn't know Rosa Parks, but they knew plenty of women like her, more than a few wives and mothers from the Pike County did domestic work in Montgomery. She was arrested. Montgomery was just 50 miles down the road from us. Our minister lived there. Most of my teachers were from there. So when Dr. King, as president of the Montgomery Improvement Association, led a boycott of those buses, we felt like we were part of it too. I listened firsthand to accounts of what was happening. May, they're empty. Every day they'd be full, but there's hardly a soul riding those buses now. I followed it almost every day, either in the papers or on the radio. The boycott went on for more than a year. Dr. King's example showed me that it was possible to do more as a minister than what I had witnessed in my own church. I was inspired. So five days before my 16th birthday, I preached my first public sermon a praying mother from the first book of Samuel. I was nervous, but once I warmed up, the congregation warmed up too, and out poured the emotions. After hearing of my sermon, the Montgomery Advertiser asked to take my picture for an article. 
That was the first time I ever saw my name in print. Washington, D.C. 8.51 a.m. January 20th, 2009. Congressman? Yes, young lady? Jacob and Esau, they play too many video games. But they work hard. They're good boys. Come in. Sir, they'll be ready for you in five minutes. Thank you. I'm really very sorry. We've taken up so much of your time. We should get going. No, no, please stay. We still have a little time. What were you going to ask? I guess, well, school. What should you do after high school? How did you go to college? Is that where you met Dr. King? Huh. Well, yes and no. My mother helped me go to college. My mother had a part-time job working at the White Baptist, offering home in downtown Troy, Alabama. One day at work, she saw a little paper published in the Alabama Baptist Convention, which was all white. It mentioned a school in Nashville called American Baptist Theological Seminary that was jointly supported by the white Southern Baptists and the black National Baptists. According to the article, it was a school for black men and women to study to become ministers or missionaries, and it offered a work-study program on campus. Apply here. So I applied to go to school there and was accepted. And I got a job washing dishes and serving food on the line. It wasn't glamorous, but I got to know all the faculty, students, and visitors. Everybody needs to eat. I love the new ideas college was introducing me to, in religion and philosophy, but I couldn't stop thinking about the social gospel. Here I was reading about justice when there were brave people out there working to make it happen. I started to feel guilty for not doing more. I became restless. I thought about Troy State, just a few miles from my parents' home, where no black student was allowed. So I applied as a transfer student. One month passed, then another. I never heard back. Finally, I decided to introduce myself to the only person who I thought could understand what I was trying to do. Over the next several weeks, I exchanged a series of letters and phone calls with Reverend Ralph Abernathy and a lawyer named Fred Gray. Everyone knew Fred Gray. He represented Rosa Parks and was now Dr. King's attorney. Finally, Gray and Abernathy wrote to tell me that Dr. King wanted to meet me. One Saturday morning in the spring of 1958, my father drove me to the Greyhound bus station again. Neither of us said a word. I boarded a bus and traveled 50 miles from Troy to Montgomery. I'd never seen a lawyer before, black or white. And I presume you're John Lewis? Yes, sir. Attorney Gray? We're going to have to drive over to the church. Come in. So, are you the boy from Troy? Are you John Lewis? I just want to meet the boy from Troy. I was so scared. Who is this young man who wants to desegregate Troy State? I didn't know what to say or do. Dr. King, I am John Robert Lewis. I said my whole name. Do you really want to go to Troy State? Yes, Dr. King, I want to go to Troy State. They questioned me about everything. Well, you know, where I was from, how I was raised, if I knew what I would really face. To attend Troy State, we'll have to sue the state of Alabama and the Board of Education. You're not old enough to file a suit. You'll have to get your parents okay. They're going to have to sign. But if you want to go, we'll help. We'll raise the money to file the suits, and we'll support you all the way. But you must keep in mind, your parents could lose their jobs, your family home could be bombed or burned, you may get hurt, or your family may get hurt. 
I don't know what will happen. You need to go back to Troy and talk it over with your family. My father didn't say a word to me on the ride back home from the bus station either. But the next morning, they sat me down for questioning, asking me what had happened the previous day. I told them. At first, they wanted to be supportive, but they were afraid. Not just for themselves, but for those around us, our friends and neighbors. They said they didn't want anything to do with filing a suit against the state of Alabama. Nothing. Not one thing. I was heartbroken, but it was their decision. I wrote Dr. King a letter explaining that I would be returning to Nashville in the fall. Looking back, it must have been the spirit of history taking hold of my life, because in Nashville, I'd meet people who opened my eyes to a sense of values that would forever dominate my moral philosophy, the way of peace, the way of love, the way of nonviolence. Come in.